Conversations is about conspiracies. And then we have to draw some conclusions. Can Christians believe in these things like conspiracy? When we believe in conspiracy, we are saying God doesn't know what's happening. So man is planning and man will do whatever he wants to do. But this is not strange, my friends. I'm going to take you to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and show you that what is happening today in the church and in the nation is not new. But the answer is still the same. Read with me verses 10 through 17 of Jeremiah chapter 6. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken and the age with him that is full of years. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, said the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall, at the time that I visit them they shall be cast down, said the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Standing in the ways and see, and ask for the old past, where is the good way, and walk therein, and he shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. And I said, Watchman over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. When we look at this chapter, we see the warning and certainty of judgment as we begin verse 1. God warned the people to flee for safety because his hand of judgment was ready to fall, verse 1. God warned the people that he would destroy Zion, that is Jerusalem. God warned the people that he would use others as his agents of judgment. Verses 3 through 5.
God warned that judgment must be executed against Jerusalem, verses 6 and 7. God warned the people that they must repent or he would turn away from them and make their land desolate like a barren desert, verse 8. God warned the people that judgment would be thorough and complete, verse 9. God warned the people that their ears would be close to his word, verse 10. God warned his people that his wrath would fall on everyone, verse 11. God warned the people that the conquerors would take all the people's houses, property, and wives, verse 12. When God's wrath fall upon the people, they would lose everything, including their freedom. Three reasons were given why they would lose everything. Number one, because the people were greedy for gain and sought to gain more and more. At the same time, they neglected those in their community and the world who are in very desperate need, verse 12. Because the prophets and the priests were deceptive, another reason for their coming destruction. They ignored God's word and preached peace instead of sin and righteousness and judgment. They were not concerned with proclaiming the truth of sinful lifestyle, but, but the need for people to turn to God in repentance and live righteously. Their concern was to secure the support and, and, and following of the people. Therefore, they sought the favor of the people by focusing on peace, increasing self-esteem, and boosting egos. Again, the destruction is coming because they were unashamed of their sinful conduct. Verse 15. When we consider those who are responsible for proclaiming the word, the priests and the prophets, those self-soaping, self-seeking clergymen completely fail to come to grips with the serious ailment of the nation. The pious platitudes of those leaders would no more cure the, the, the wounds of Judah than, my friends, some doctors could heal skin cancer. These leaders felt no shame at present. They have no conscience. They do not know the truth. But the leaders will eventually share the fate of those who have been misguided. They shall fall among those who are slain in battle. They shall disrespectfully be thrown to the ground and by, by the ruthless conqueror. Look at verse 16. In the view of Jeremiah, the nation was at a crossroad. In the view of Jeremiah, not only the nation, but the nation at this time was God's people. They were at a crossroads. The kings had failed them. Some of the prophets had failed them. And instead of preaching righteousness and judgment and preach against sin, they all wanted to know how good they were. It was all about eagles. So Jeremiah calls for the people to stand to halt their headlong rush to destruction. Jeremiah urges them to select the old paths of fidelity to God and adherence to his holy law and then to walk in those paths. The old paths are those which the previous generation had trodden and found salvation and divine blessings. 
There is but one way which has the blessings of the Lord, and that is the way of obedient faith. The person who walks the old path will find spiritual rest for his soul. So again, we ask, what's the problem? The problem was and is man depending on himself for the answer to his problems, problems that he made for himself. He thought he had the answer and would not turn to God. The person who turns to God will live a life free from anxiety about the here and now and the hereafter as well. But in spite of the tender and gracious appeal on the part of God and the, the people of Judah persist in stubbornly refusing to yield to his will. Their defiant response was, we will not walk in it. When people sinned, they did not blush. Consequently, God declared that they would face the judgment. They would fall as a nation and as a people. They would be punished. God warned the people that they were standing at the crossroads. But my friends, we have to know what really existed then. We have to look at the political conditions that existed at that time. It was a period characterized by political instability. Are we talking about the United States of America and the world in 20 and 2020? You draw the conclusions. But it seemed like we've gone full circle. What happened in Jeremiah's time is happening right now. And people are looking to the wrong source for the answer. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation, so where could I go but to the Lord? God had been good to them. Remember, God brought them out of Egypt after 430 years. Brought them to the Red Sea parted the waters and they came through on dry ground. Through to them through the wilderness where God defeated all their enemies. Gave them water when there was no water. Gave them food from heaven when there was no food to eat. God was there and now they were turning against God. Sometimes we forget the blessings that God has given to us. We forget where we came from. When we were at nobody, God made us somebody. When we didn't know where to go, God gave us a way. I know men and women are acting as if there is no God. Leaving everything to the hands of men. But the same hands that caused the problem were the same hands that will cause us to be destroyed at the hands of God. Listen. Judah was caught in the middle of the death trouble between two superpowers, Egypt to the south and Mesopotamia to the north. She observed the, the rise of the Babylonian Empire with, with this ambitious monarch, Nebuchadnezzar. They saw thousands of their old countrymen, the best citizens of the nation, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even Ezekiel, taken away into Babylon. They saw the Babylonian battering rams systematically reduce the walls of Jerusalem to Jericho, and we still won't learn. Thousands of years later in Jerusalem, these same Jews saw Titus came to the city of Jerusalem and destroy that city and we still would learn. We have seen nation after nation rise up against God and many of them are gone. Many of those dictators who thought that they were it, 
They have all died and gone on. Definitely not to God's eternal heaven. Who tell us that the same faith does not wait those today who will not listen to God, but because of their own pride and arrogance, think that they have the solution to the problem of sin. We go back to Jeremiah's time and we see the gallant effort of Josiah to bring about a reformation. But this reformation did not have any effect upon the hearts of the people. Oh yes, they changed some stuff. But their hearts were still wicked. Their religion was like an empty bucket. And on the outside they did everything right. But on the inside they did everything wrong. Jeremiah was the voice of one crying in the wilderness as it were. Listen to him. Thus said the Lord, standing in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where he is the good way and walk therein and he shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. As we enter this new year, we like to make resolutions only for them to be forgotten a day or two after. We ask us today to think about where we are going, where God is concerned. We also look at the moral conditions of the time. Jeremiah lived in corrupt times. The prophet summarized the vices of his day, stealing and murder and adultery and false swearing, even idolatry. Chapter 7 and verse 9, he says, Why will you steal and murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom you know not? The house of God virtually became a den of robbers. Verse 11 of chapter 7. Human life was cheap. Infants were offered up as sacrifices in the valley of Himmon. A faithful prophet of God was hunted down and executed for preaching the word of God. I must suggest to you, as we have hinted in times past, it is sad to see preachers of the Lord's church it is weird, really, really sad to see some folks saying some things on Facebook and have to go to preach on a Sunday morning. It doesn't look good. And what we are seeing are some things that would promote one race above the other. And it's ugly. And what we end up doing is splitting the church. I'm not realizing it. Yes, spiritual conditions were bad. Social conditions were even worse. But there needs to be a man like Jeremiah to preach the word. A man of sensitivity. In those difficult, turbulent times, he became the center of controversy, the object of nefarious schemes, the butt of ridicule. He was subject to a constant barrage of slander and persecution, while outwardly he stood in the face of those abuse, of this abuse, like an iron pillar. Inwardly he was a broken man. But the sense of dedication, the overpowering urge of God's word with him enabled him to rise to the heights of the call. And so we need men like him. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, Going through the straight gate, because wide is the gate, 
and God is the way that is leading to destruction and many of those that go in there uh, but straight is the gate and compressed is the way that leads to the life and few are those finding it. Life is full of choices. Just take a moment to think about how many different decisions that you made just to be in the assembly this morning or even in your homes wherever you are. About what time to get up, whether or not to have a shower, what to wear, what to eat, what car to drive, or do we attend church at all? Each day we are confronted with choices. So these choices that we make are on a daily basis have very little impact on our lives such as what and where to eat. Other choices can significantly change the course of our lives such as do we have children? Do we get married? What career do I choose? Then we have a, 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 a whole other set of choices dealing with our daily conduct. There comes a point in our lives where we are standing at the crossroads. We will be standing at the crossroads where there are two signs. One pointing to Jesus and eternal life. And the other pointing toward a path of destruction. Each of us will have to make our own choice. Again, going back to Jeremiah, we'll see how the prophet confronted his people at the crossroads. Examine the text for a minute again. He called on the people to stop for a moment. Don't you wish you could get a message like this to the entire country? Stop for a moment. Forget about yourself for a moment and think about the God of heaven who loves us and cares about us and wants us to have the kind of faith in him where we cannot believe in these conspiracies. That we realize that God is in charge. And there are times when we ask for something, he gave it to us. Not because it is good for us, but because we need it. Sometimes we need a whooping. And sometimes God sends us that person to give us a whooping, to wake us up. But are we listening? Stand at the crossroads and see. Why is God allowing all this to happen to our country and even to the church that we might wake up, that we might show the faith in him that we need to have in order that we might be blessed? I have said this over and over again during this last year or so, that some people are being cursed and some people their faith is being tested. Which one of those are you? Shall I be cursed because of their complete refusal to listen to God? And so us, our faith is being tested. Sometimes we want to curse, but we can. Sometimes we want to get even, but we can. Because we are children of God. And God will hold us guilty if we don't do his will. We need to know that there is a way of godliness and righteousness that has always been the way which God has owned and blessed. Isaiah did sin, Isaiah 35 and verse 8, and a highway shall be there and the way and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for the redeemed, the wayfaring men. The ed fools shall not err therein. In Proverbs 16 and verse 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. 
So we encourage you to ask for the old past prescribed by the law of God, the written word, the true standard for living. As for the past, the patriarchs traveled in before you, men like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Moses, ask for the old past. Where is the good way? And when we ask for the old past, it is only in order to find the good way, the highway of the upright, the way the saints had traveled. At the crossroads of the future, uh, we look for the future. The children of God were to inquire concerning the proper road to take. Specifically, they would ask, they would ask for the old paths. Literally, they would ask for the deep rooted roads of old. The roads that have been traveled so frequently that once one was of them, we could not lose this way. We do ask, as we see the old ones leave us, and they themselves travel the old paths, who were loyal, who stood, to, stood to, for the church, who stood for the old way, and here we are, a new generation, and we are not as careful as those old ones were going on as they were. We will miss them. They travel the path. They, 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 they suffer the ridicule of being members of the lost church, but they stood firm. They were insulted, but they stood because the old path was the best way. We too can succeed. We can leave this world knowing that we have traveled the old paths. But you must go down the road through obedience to the gospel. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He alone is the Son of God. Not anyone else. He alone is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. After believing in him, you need to turn away from your sins in repentance, confess in his name, and be baptized in his name for the remission of sins. And you'll be walking the path that he walked 2,000 years ago. The path of righteousness that led to his death and will lead to our salvation in the end. We extend to you this morning an invitation. Why don't you come to Jesus and ask for the old paths? Trust and